This is regarding a little bit of a cheat method um, if we don't have anything. Is you can model up uh, a bit of a temporary object. So the sphere is a bit of an obvious one. We can easily make a, an object that we can sort of rotoscope or, or put in the background. And I've just got one here that we can put on texture mode and you can sort of see where that is. But if you've got a, a bit more of a complicated object, say some sort of machinery part, sometimes your, your polyflow isn't like nice like a sphere is. And uh, one of these objects you can model just quickly like from a sphere, just put it in place just for that corner and use this technique. So here we have our, um, our reference object, I'm gonna call it here. So I can't select that, I'll just put it on a layer and uh, made that uh, unselectable. I'm gonna make it selectable just for a short amount of time. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here to the modeling toolkit and we want to make our constraint here that uh, poly surface 2, which I believe is the one that we have selected. Yes, it is. So that's how we would do it manually through the menus. Now, if you have my hotkeys, you can also do that by holding Control and Alt and D and just coming through and go select constraint object. So that's a much easier way of doing it and it will put that into our transform constraint here. And what that means is once we've got our toolkit activated, if we come in here and select some of these points. So I'm just gonna select even some faces or whatever. And we start to move these around. They're going to want to snap to that object. So as you can see, now those are actually snapping to that actual object which is beautiful and this is a, a lovely way of uh, getting some of your form to be working quite nicely so I'm just going to come in here to this mode just select some of these edges and now we can just move these around a little bit and you can see how powerful this tool is uh, really good as soon as we move a ver vertex we're going to be snapping it to that object now you don't want to go too far and try and move one of these ones because they'll try and snap to that object as well, so just keep them alone, the ones that aren't sort of in that affected area. But we certainly can come in here and start to do that. Now you could actually even potentially hide that object so it's not in the way. So just hide that. And it should still be working, so we're gonna come in here and select uh, one of these guys and just move it around a bit, and it's still snapping to that guide object. So that's a really good way of doing things. So come in here, select some of these, move them around and we can get them snapping nicely. So it takes a little bit of time to create a guide ob object of some kind but this is definitely the way to go um, if you can manage to get a guide object that's in the way and it's a very accurate nice way of working as we can see here. So this is a, a really common problem in, in modeling like this and as we can see, we've got this object back into a nice form shape uh, quite quickly. And you can imagine uh, if this was a real example, it wouldn't be a perfect sphere. It'd be like the side of someone's face or, you know, the back of a, a character or something like that. And this stuff's really common that we can use. We could even go into base mode and edge mode and do this a little bit quicker, that sort of thing. So have a play around with these tools uh, for getting kinks out of models and things like that uh, and see how you go and um, I hope this helps.